Hi everyone, today we are going to explore some of the best spots in Japan and we are going to show you some of the restaurants that I love visiting as well every time I visit Tokyo and before that we are going to partake in the wildest festival or matsuri in Japan and this is located in Kanagawa Prefecture only an hour train ride away from Tokyo in Kawasaki. We are going to visit this little shrine in Kawasaki called Kanayama Shrine, Kanayama Jinja, where two blacksmith gods of Shinto religion is enshrined, Kanayama Hime and Kanayama Hiko. People come to Kanayama Shrine to pray for love, to pray for fertility, and to pray for protection from sexually transmitted disease. Actually, I have really annoying little brothers and sister and I kind of want to have uh, an adorable sibling so I took my mom here. <laughs> I was thinking of bringing my dad too but he's he doesn't really like uh, to travel a lot. Maybe it would be like a miracle or something. <laughs> If you are planning to visit Japan, make sure to visit during April or last week of May because every first Sunday of April, you would be able to, to join in on the festival of the Steel Phallus in Kanayama Shrine. But make sure that if you're ever going to join in the festival, if you ever want to watch the festival, make sure you go early or else you're going to be stuck with the crowds outside of the shrine because the shrine only has a small area and they can only accommodate maybe a few hundred and once the the grounds are full they're gonna close it down and you would be waiting on the street with the rest of the crowd when we went to Kaneyama shrine last april we went without even eating breakfast we really want to go there when there's not a lot of people so it's not as noisy and if you if you are not a big fan of crowds it's better that way you can stop by a convenience store there's a convenience store outside the shrine and uh, actually you don't even need to stop by the convenience stores because uh, during the festival you're, you're gonna have a lot of uh, pop-up stores in the shrine where you can have phallus or penis shaped treats and uh, other stuff as well they also have food trucks where they offer street food and drinks like highball if you're a big fan of highball or other goodies they also have shirts souvenirs Anyway, a lot of the stores, a lot of the pop-up shops and food trucks in the area, I heard some of the, the, the proceeds would be donated to HIV research. I think that's a great thing. It In this uh, festival, we have three mikoshis or floats. We have a wooden phallus, 
we have a uh, an iron phallus and we also have the the gigantic the giant pink phallus donated by a cross dressing club and they named it after uh, the cross dressing club so they call it uh, elizabeth mikoshi legend has it that kaneyamahiko and kaneyamahime healed the goddess izanami when she gave birth to the fire god and that's one of the reasons why people come here for easy childbirth and health as well but uh, izanami the primordial god of uh, creation and death in japan actually died after giving birth to the fire god because the fire god burnt her birth canal which is a kind of conflicting but maybe the blacksmith gods tried to heal her but was not very successful and another legend was that there was a demon who fell in love with a woman and hid in her vagina when the woman made love with her husband the demon bit off her husband's penis a couple of times the woman went to ask a blacksmith for help and what they did was they inserted a metal phallus in her vagina then the demon bit the metal penis and broke its teeth sending it away for good according to legend one of the penis is enshrined in Kaneyama Jinja After this uh, festival, after the Matsuri, uh, we decided to run away because there's just so many people. There's like thousands waiting outside and it got really crazy. So we took the train back towards uh, Shibuya to show you some of the best spots for you to see in Japan as well as some restaurants if you love to eat. So um, the first stop after uh, visiting the Matsuri festival, we are going to Hikari, Shibuya Hikari building. We have two large buildings right beside uh, Shibuya Scramble. Shibuya Hikari building and right in front of the Hikari building is Shibuya Square uh, Scramble building where the famous Shibuya Sky is. But before that, uh, we are going to visit the sky lobby of Hikari building. If, if you ever don't have time or if, if you want a free spot to see 
the Shibuya crossing. The Shibuya Hikari building is a great idea. You can take the glass elevator towards uh, the 11th floor, stop by Lawson, stop by a convenience store in the Sky Lobby, grab a beer or grab a, grab a snack, eat it in front of the floor to ceiling windows while uh, looking out towards uh, the nice view of Shibuya. After that, we are gonna stop by the actually they also have different kinds of restaurants in this building if you if you want to sit down restaurant you can definitely check it out as well After looking out Shibuya Hikari building, we'll definitely stop by Shibuya Square Scramble building, which is right on top of the train station. You can access it from the street or from the train station. You have a couple of floors dedicated for foodies. So if you love to eat, if you love different kinds of food and Japanese food, the 12th and the 13th floor is for you. We took the elevator to the 13th floor and they have restaurants like Din Tai Fung, which is like the probably the cheapest Michelin star dumpling restaurant. If you love dumplings, if you love Xiaolong Bao, like they have really good truffle Xiaolong Bao, but there's a long line. So we decided to stop by the La Cocina Cerveceria, La Cocina Cerveceria which is a Spanish tapas bar where they serve pinchos, which is like small dishes that you share with other people, with friends. And it's pretty, it's a pretty popular uh, concept in Spain. And Spanish food is one of the best food to have. I usually try to enjoy local food, but I thought it might be a good idea to try uh, what the Japanese would do with Spanish food. So why not? So we went to this restaurant and the 13th floor and the restaurant has incredible views of Shibuya Square Scramble and the good thing is you don't even need to pay entrance fee you get to enjoy food and you get to enjoy the nice view of Shibuya from from your table but that's not to say that it's not worth it to visit this uh, Shibuya Sky in Shibuya Square Scramble building. We are gonna stop by Shibuya Sky. We took a lot of footage inside Shibuya Sky and I want you to see it for yourself. You can decide for yourself if it's worth it to visit Shibuya Sky. And if you're ever planning to visit Shibuya Sky, they have timed entries. It would be a good idea for you to schedule your visit around an hour before sunset because that way you'd be able to see Tokyo during daytime and also during sunset and also during the nighttime. So you'd have three different uh, shots of taking videos or photos and selfies and different vibes off the city. Baby <laughs> Squid! Mushroom and sauces. Ooh. Meatball pala, meatball. Mustard. 
You have to book your tickets a few months in advance because if you want a specific time, if you are on, if you are running on a specific schedule, you have to book your tickets a few months in advance in order for you to save time. They have a snack bar. The food is not the best food, but it's it's not that bad. It's pretty standard, it's nothing crazy, it's okay. They also have cocktails and different uh, drinks for you to try as well. But don't eat too much because after this we are going, I'm going to take you to one of my favorite uh, restaurants in Japan and it's gonna be a barbecue place if you love A5, A5 Wagyu. If you wanna try A5 Wagyu, I think this restaurant is for you. It Oh, mukbang, mukbang. Like passion fruit then, mommy. Mmm. It tastes like French fries. Mmm.
ay di mas masisira hindi ba yung called Hanno, Hanno dai Dokorobete. It's uh, located very close to Shibuya 109. So once you leave this uh, this building, just walk towards Shibuya 109. Once you're in front Shibuya, of Shibuya 109, walk to the left of the building. And uh, once you're past Uniqlo and uh, the convenience store, take the elevator to the seventh floor. They also have a nice view, but it's just the street view of Shibuya. I have been visiting this restaurant uh, since maybe 10, 8 years ago. And uh, around that time, they were serving. A, and every time I come here, I would usually order uh, an A5 Yamagata steak and it's usually a 200 gram but they don't have it on the menu anymore and they replaced it with a, with a more expensive cut they replaced it with a Chateaubriand uh, Wagyu which is great but the it's because Chateaubriand is one of the most expensive cuts of meat it's not as big it's not as filling as the other one which is actually we find too much because uh before when i took my friends here every time i take my friends here uh, they would serve us like the 200 cut of uh, a5 wagyu steak a5 yamagata beef and it's really f the thing about yamagata beef is it's very fatty and 200 grams is a lot you you because it's very fatty you would feel full right away so that's the only thing but it's okay this time they they, they don't have the 200 gram steak they have the uh, chateau brand which is a, a little smaller a little uh, around 100 gram for 5600 yen something like that and we also tried to order uh, the other cuts of uh, a5 yamagata beef the only thing is they are out of some of the cuts that I tried to point. And usually, many years ago, they would give us two kinds of menu. The Yamagata beef menu and the course menu. This time, they only gave us the course menu. I had to ask for the Yamagata beef menu. After ordering some of the cuts on the Yamagata beef menu, I realized that they are out of uh, some of the cuts of meat. So we were, we were only able to order a couple of the different cuts of meat and the Chateaubriand. So my mom, my brother, and I we ordered Chateaubriand and a couple of a couple more uh, different kinds of uh, cut of A5 Yamagata just to try it. We we tried to stay away from the course menu because we were kind of full already because we've been eating all day, and I was thinking maybe we could 
also eat in the next stop. After this, we are going to stop by one of my favorite stops in Shinjuku. They go wasabi, wasabi. Ultimate ribs, though, mommy. Ultimate ribs. Oh my god. Look at this marbling. Look at this marbling. So the fire is pretty strong, so just give it 20 seconds and then flip it. Wow, look at that. Oh my god. Oh my god. So good. Huh? Mommy, one bite. Just hold it. Mm. Oh my god. So we took the train from Shibuya to Shinjuku to Omoide Yokocho, which is which is also called Memory Lane or Piss Alley because this area got popular after the World War World War II and there's no washroom, so people would just piss on the street. But right now they have a washroom, so people don't piss on the street anymore, and they have really good stores. They have tiny restaurants where you can try different kinds of Japanese food like yakitori, ramen, they also have uh, sushi. There's one sushi place that you have to find if you are into sushi. There's only one sushi restaurant in Omoide Yokocho. But the, the only problem is uh, this place is usually busy a few hours before midnight, before and after midnight. So if you want to have a, a seat, make sure you go way early or very late or else you won't be able to eat in one of the restaurants. And uh, most of the restaurants only accept cash. So bring cash. Some restaurants accept credit cards. The only problem is that my mom and brother, they are already very full from eating all day. So we weren't able to wait for seats or we weren't able to try any yakitori place but if you ever have time this place is actually pretty good as well and after that as usual we usually stop by the convenience store before we go back to the hotel just in case we need more water and stuff for me i usually stop by convenience stores for desserts like pudding or sometimes they have tiramisu with coffee jelly it's really good you have choices like 7-Eleven, Family Mart, and Lawson. And any of the three is... You can't, you can't really choose between any of the three because they're all very good. Convenience stores are 
your best options if you want to save money. And the thing is, the goods in the convenience stores are cheap, but the quality is not cheap. It's actually pretty good quality for the price. Don't hesitate because the convenience stores in Japan is on another level. And、uh, that's it for today. If you want to see more travel tips and tricks, if you ever enjoyed this、uh, video, please feel free to like and subscribe. And hit that notification bell. Thank you so much for watching. See you in the next vlog.